Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley. I'm a soul scientist. And today we are doing the bioassays test. So this was highly requested based on the last video I did, where we talked about using compost in high quantities and how it may cause issues. This test should be performed if you are using any sort of new soil, compost, manure, you name it, in your garden. This includes the home stuff that you have and make and the stuff you buy from the store. The reason being is that people commonly will think of bioassay tests as testing for persistent herbicides, which can ultimately affect the plant. But the reality is, is when we're dealing with compost, which consists of taking a ton of about above ground biomass and making it into tiny little particulates that we then grow in, we're taking a lot of nutrients and compacting it into a very small area meaning other things can accumulate which can also harm the plants such as harmful micronutrients which are only harmful in high doses it can also alter the ph meaning different micronutrients be can become more bioavailable all the way to excess nitrogen which ultimately can also harm our yield so this video is going to be for the bioassays test i'm going to show you how to perform that test appropriately and the next video we're going to talk about the difference between top dressing with compost or a no dig and then the second version which would be actually incorporating it into the soil and what the difference between the two are so let's just jump straight into it so to perform the actual test itself there are a few things you are going to need absolute must the first one being some form of a container this can come in any shape or size, but you're going to want at least two of equal size. So what I'm doing here today is two containers of equal size. Some things I have done in the past are kitty litter trays from the dollar store, such as what I've been doing in here for the last little bit. Now this one is more of an experiment. I'm hoping to launch my own potting soil for houseplants in small indoor scenarios here in the fall and i just want to make sure the product is exactly the way i want it to be so that's just some testing that i'm doing on the side but regardless this is what you want to do you want one to be filled with the compost or the substrate in question and the second one to be filled with something that you know works and has no issues so this can be either garden soil potting soil mix straight peat whatever the case is so long as it doesn't have any of the compost manure or soil that is in question anywhere in the mix so the reason why you want to get a container of similar size that are separated from one another will not be in the same tray as one another nothing is because we want to give it a very similar environment when it comes to water needs sunlight needs etc and so forth so with these containers i know i can put them in the exact same spot i can water with them the exact same amount of water and they will ultimately be in the exact same conditions this is going to allow me to very accurately compare the two now one thing you may want to consider is labeling the outsides of the containers or going for a medium that is drastically different in color from the medium in question just so you can tell the difference as things are beginning to grow so once you have these in your hand the next thing you are going to want to get is seeds so the seed choice you choose is completely up to you what i would encourage you to do is get something that is incredibly fresh meaning this year and something that also has some form of a germination test done on it so west coast seeds sell seeds in bulk and also have a lot numbers along with germination rates meaning we can actually do the math a little bit better pending the results of the experiment now because i was in a little bit of a time crunch because i was not expecting this video last video to take off we are just using some very basic beans i would encourage you to you to use broadleaf beans in particular peas or beans whether it be bush beans or trellising beans it's up to you the reason for that is because I find that they are the most susceptible to micronutrient, um, any sort of pesticide, you name it. These guys are the most sensitive. If you use something like a corn, you may or may not see results. If you use something like tomato plants, you may or may not see results. With beans and peas, you probably almost always are going to see an issue. So what you want to do is you want to count out 10 of each. So. I'm going to do one, two, three. You've done 10 of each seeds. Now, typical rule of thumb, if you can't get your hands on a West Coast seed package that actually states the germination rates, you can guesstimate around 
80%, meaning eight out of 10 of these seeds are likely to germinate. You wanna just check over the seeds, make sure there's no nicks or issues with them. As, everyone, as long as everyone looks happy and healthy, we can plant these in our soil. So you just plant these like you normally would plant a bean, and that is it. Nothing special happening here today. Equal amounts of seeds in either one, similar depths. You wanna treat these nearly identical to one another to reduce any potential issues that may arise unrelated to the compost or the potting soil that you are putting into question. There you go. Water these guys in, put them in the exact same lighting experience areas and they will be just fine. Now, what you wanna look for as these guys start to perk up and come to life is we wanna look for deficiencies but in this one compared to this one. Because this is the control, these beans are going to grow without inhibition. They aren't gonna show any micronutrient damage, they're not gonna show any deficiencies, and they're not even going to show any issues whatsoever. So this is our control, this is our experiment. What we're looking for the, in this one is things like shriveled leaves, um, damaged growth, crooked stems, you name it. That is a sign of potential herbicide damage. Now, if we're looking for something like micronutrient damage, which is entirely possible in a compost, especially if we're using something that's a hyperaccumulator that's able to maybe sequester higher levels of iron or boron combined with a pH that's ideally letting go of a ton of these nutrients to make it bioavailable to the plant, we can end up with some poison issues. Now, oddly enough, some micronutrient excess may not show up as actual micronutrient excess or burn as we like to call it. It actually may show up as a deficiency and there's a reason for this. The soil is similar to a battery. There's only so many sites that nutrients can hang out in. And because micronutrients sometimes can be smaller in size, maybe have less of an electron pull and just in general are less magnetic than some of the larger molecules that we can find in soil, those smaller molecules can get bumped out of the way and leave those sites full of boron and iron and you name it and push out things like calcium or sulfur, which actually may show up as a calcium deficiency or a sulfur deficiency, which is why I don't advocate for using straight compost because this imbalance that can happen will show up as a deficiency and then you will just go even more crazy and add even more compost and it just amplifies the issue over time. So to help you guys with this, I am going to leave a link over on the website that's going to show kind of the differences between the two and some of the things you can look for. So for example, if you're showing a calcium deficiency and you're using straight compost, that may mean you have XYZ number of micronutrients in excess. So those are all things to keep in mind. So in short, this is your bioassay test. It's gonna take you about two weeks to notice if there's any issues, maybe longer depending on the situation, but overall, it should be very, very easy to do. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining in. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, make sure to leave a comment down below and hang out for the next video, turn on the notification bell, because we're gonna be talking about the difference between top dressing or no digging compost setup versus putting it in the soil and some things we can see the benefits and the negatives to both options i want to thank you guys for watching and i'll talk to you next time bye